What is up guys? I'm Popsy and now I'll be showing you the basics to the Transverse Ocarina. All the things you need to know to get started on actually playing the Ocarina. The first thing to know about the Ocarina is the grip. How do you grip this thing? Well, this is the front side and this is the back side. Take your left thumb put it over this hole and on the front side the left fingers go over all of these holes and the right hand palm facing down put the thumb over this hole like so and on the front side you put the rest of the fingers just over these holes if you got little extra holes on the front side they're called sub holes don't worry about them just yet all right things to note about the grip first there shouldn't be any air leaking out of the holes. They must be completely covered, completely sealed. Otherwise, it's gonna make the ocarina just sound bad. Second, keep your fingers curved. They shouldn't be straight. Otherwise, it's just gonna be very unnatural and uncomfortable for you to hold the ocarina. Third, don't grip the ocarina too hard. With too much force, it's just gonna make your hands sore and tired and that is no good. So, what is this finger position? Covering 10 holes. Well, it's the starting position and it plays the note which the ocarina is in key of. This ocarina is in key of C. The starting position plays the note C. It's also the starting point and the root of the major scale that the ocarina is tuned to. The second thing to learn about the ocarina is the scale. How to play the scale? Well, there's a specific order in which you need to open the holes to play the correct scale. I personally imagine my fingers having certain numbers to each one of them which is the order in which to open the holes the order goes like this number one number two number three number four number five number six number seven number eight number nine number ten all right so let's go over the order on the ocarina the starting position in this case plays the c this will play the D, this will play E, and going up F, G, A, B, C, D, E, and F, with all holes open, it plays the top F. So going down, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, and C, and going to the sub holes, B and A. What's notable about the scale is that when you go up the scale, you tend to run out of ways to support the ocarina. So how do you properly support the ocarina? You should at least have three points of contact with the ocarina to support it. The first would be the mouthpiece and your mouth. The second point of contact would be your right hand pinky. After opening the four first holes, you place your pinky like so, grabbing the ocarina. And the third point of contact would be on your thumb, on this part of the thumb, supporting the ocarina like so, opening and closing the hole with just the tip of your thumb. That creates three points of contact and also if you want more points of contact, you can use your right hand thumb the same way you use the left hand thumb. With this part of the thumb, opening and closing the hole with just the tip of your thumb. And on the sound ocarina, there's this wing which allows you to have one more additional point of contact with this part of the left hand index finger, like so. The third thing to know about the ocarina is breath control. How do you use your breath when blowing into the ocarina? Your breath affects the pitch 
and the tone of the ocarina. And also, on most ocarinas, the higher you go up the scale, the more breath it requires to play. I'm constantly adjusting my breath on every hole, raising the breath pressure smoothly. You should start by finding the air pressure that's required to produce sound on the starting position. It might be low, it might be high, you just have to find it. Then, when going up the scale, you do the same thing for every hole to produce sound. Raising and lowering your breath pressure until it produces sound. Now, because the air pressure affects the pitch of the ocarina, you must use the correct air pressure in order to play in tune, to produce the correct accurate pitch. On every hole, you must find the correct air pressure required to produce the accurate pitch in order to play in tune with other instruments or other music. Well-tuned ocarinas are easier to play in tune, to play the accurate pitch, while some ocarinas might be completely unable to practically play in tune. If you're just starting out, if you're just a beginner with the ocarina, you shouldn't worry too much about playing in tune, because accuracy will only come by playing and practice over time. When playing the ocarina, you often want to articulate the notes that you play. This is done by tonguing. There are many tonguing techniques, well not that many, but there are a few. And the most basic one is the tu tonguing technique, which is done by whispering tu into the ocarina. It's the same as saying out loud tu, but without using the vocal cords to produce your voice. There are other tonguing techniques like ka using the sound k and ra using the sound r. They sound like this. There I used a combination of taka taka taka, which is ta and ka, just combined. Now let's recap. First, the grip. Don't overdo it. Don't use too much force. Completely cover the holes. No air leakage. Slightly curve your fingers. And get relaxed. Get comfortable holding the ocarina. Second, the scale. First, memorize the order of the holes and maybe memorize the notes. Each fingering plays and practice your supporting of the ocarina. Third, the breath. The breath pressure affects the tone and the pitch of the ocarina. The more holes you have open, the higher the breath requirement is. Practice playing each note on the scale one by one, trying to make a good clean sound on each fingering. If you're a beginner, don't worry too much about playing accurately in tune. This will come when your ear and your muscle memory Develop. But if you really want to practice your pitch accuracy to play in tune, I recommend playing alongside music or alongside other instruments. You should now know everything needed to start playing the ocarina and learning songs and music. There are a few ways to learn music. Through reading, for example, sheet music or tabs. Second, to play by ear to hear something and be able to play it. And third, being taught by somebody, for example, through a video or in person. You could also just make music by improvising or composing your own music. For beginners, I recommend sheet music, tabs and video tutorials. The ocarina is a great instrument for learning to read sheet music. Whichever way you choose to learn music, 
Be sure to have fun, because that's the whole point. But that's it for today. See you next time.